Hi there. It's Vicki Ross and today I'm going to work on the first artwork for the Field Notes Journal and this one is going to be a maze and I'm going to do it in watercolor and then we might try it in acrylic. The difference in the two would be that you'd need to mix up your acrylic well before you, um, you know, have little puddles of it already liquefied before you, uh, got two things going at once, sorry about that, um, before you start. I'm going to use a number six black velvet by Silver Brush. And I've already put a big drop of water in these. Ooh. Let's write these down so we don't forget it. I went through my my tins of that's not a good one to show you. Let's see. Let's get this one. I did a video on how I, how and why I do these, and because it makes it easier to have every one of my colors, oops, um, at hand and the numbers, and you can see that I've got quite a few missing. I need to uh, catch this up. But anyway, I just picked out some colors that I thought looked like, um, I don't know, just pretty colors. So anyway, I pulled them, and they have labels on them that says what they are, and which tin they go in, and which number spot they go in. And I do have a video on that. So that's what we're working from. Now this is Cat Orange, I do believe. Don't drop it. Windsor Orange, same thing. I better put my apron on. The paper I'm working on is Fabriano uh, 300 GSM 140 pound Artistico and that's their artist brand. You can use anything you want but just remember that there will be differences in the way yours look as the way mine look. Um, even if you go from one artist's paper to another, uh, they look different from each other because of the way they've... Windsor, Newton, Orange. Um, the way their individual... I just lost the word. Sizings accept the paint. Uh, watercolor is designed to sit on top of the paper for a bit of time, and that varies from each one. Some use um, internal sizing, some use external, some use both. They're all different, so that's just to help you understand <coughs> or know why it would be different. The, I recommend all cotton paper, and there are variations between all cotton papers. I've used B paper, which is an Oh, probably middle of the road paper. It is all cotton, but it behaves differently than the Fabriano. See how that's still sitting on top of the paper? I need to keep that up where you can see it. Um, let's see what else. The inexpensive papers like Canson and Strathmore. For the most part, the ones that are widely available are a cellulose or a cellulose cotton blend. <laughs> and they're fine for a lot of reasons, for a lot of things. But they are... Uh, this, I can... Depending on the color, of course. If it's a staining color or not.
but you're going to lift. Just putting clean water on it. We'll see if it does. I suspect this is going to be a staining color, which means you would never get it out. But some colors lift right up because they have not soaked straight into the paper yet. I'm not rubbing the paper, I'm just pressing and lifting. And that's pretty much lifted. Um, you can see the difference where we started. So, without further ado, this looks to be a quinacridone gold. It's mostly water still. And that is. Queen Gold Windsor Newton. Every manufacturer, of course, makes things that are different. So Queen Gold, and that stands for Quinacridone. Quinacridone Gold in one brand. Let's see if I can get some a little more color. Quinacridone Gold and Windsor Newton or Daniel Smith or M. Graham, Schmincke, Sonalye, what am I missing? Uh, Core. They're all going to be different from each other. So there are a lot of professional artists who only want one of those because of the way it mixes and the way it behaves. So um, that's the reason for it. And let's, let's get another one. And they all have different formulas. This is a reddish. I think this is burnt sienna. Nope, that's Daniel Smith Quinacridone Orange. Each of these has a magnet on the bottom, a strong magnet. Um, these are little cigarette tins. Um, you know, the ones they sell at, I don't know what kind they are, they're uh, <laughs> cigarillos, and um, they're sold in cigar stores, so they're those little short things, but the cases are wonderful, they're the white depth, but a regular magnet wasn't strong enough to hold them in, and I have dropped these a time or two, so, aerodinium magnets are Something like that. Okay, going to the next one. And that would be bronzite, bur bronzite from Daniel Smith. And then last but not least, I pulled M. Graham Burnt Sienna. Everybody cool with it? I really need a yellower color, I think. I don't know. I'm making it up. So a yellower. Let's go with too many choices. I don't want to get orange again. Hence a yellow is pretty good. Let's try that one. I didn't want to go with a, a yellow that had orange in it. 
because we're using that orange. Let me get this wet. Now my idea for this may take me a couple of attempts to get. I'm going to wait for these to dry. Got a little too much water. I'm going to dry these so I can turn the paper over. And I will be doing a, uh, on the back of each of the little paintings, I'll be doing a color chart so that we can always go back and see what we did. All right, now, just find a maze that you like, and we want it to be about the width of the pencil. It helps if you turn on the camera, drat. All right, so we'll go, I'll talk again on what we're doing. This was such a pill to draw that I finally just drew circles. And then figured out where the openings were. to do this one over I'm on a it's all right satellite satellite okay so now let's see I told you that I found this, and I can't provide the picture, but it's <clears throat> it's on the back of a Honey Nut Cheerios box. If you wet it first, then all you have to do is touch it with the tip of your brush and it will flow and blend together just like that. As long as you get to these extra pieces before it loses its wetness, you can just keep coming back and adding color as long as you want. And when you touch that very wet spot, It will just flow through the rest of your wetness. So you don't get any blooms, you don't get, you know, any of the bad juju stuff. Well, except I like the bad juju stuff. I sometimes do blooms on purpose.
So this is why I had so much trouble. Because the you kind of get lost on the rings where you are. Like right here. because I thought it would be easier than I'm looking now to see if I've got some little lumpies everywhere it's where a good brush comes in handy <clears throat> Brushes, watercolor brushes that are meant for mixed media, um, don't let you do tricks and things. They're just good to get the paint on the paper. But I'm using the very tip of this brush occasionally, and then the full body of the brush, and it holds paint beautifully. So, this is the way the other one dried. It's not bad, but I'm going to do it again, just for grins. And this time I just held it up to the light and traced on this side. These are practice pieces. I am going to use Arteza real brush pens. And the first thing I'm going to do is swatch them out, see what I got. It's a little bit redder than I want. Now let's see how much these bleed. You know, sometimes figuring out what you want to do or what you want to do it with is half of the battle. It's not a battle, it's um, it's actually fun. And I don't like the way these are reacting on the watercolor paper. So I'm going to put those up. These are the handiest cases. It's got two Velcro tabs on each side that pull the thing up tight. Right here. And then the lid comes over. It has another Velcro strip and then for extra measure, two good clips. I always make sure I clip them because they get stepped on. <laughs> Not that my room is messy or anything. Now then, that I found <laughs> the right bucket 
This is a small suitcase type thing. And you can unzip all of them and then just have them lay open. And this is Arteza. You know, I'm not sure what these are, but I don't, I think I just bought the watercolor. So I'm going to pull out a few colors and then see I mixed in my Derwent ink tints. I've got things set up by value, which automatically puts them by, almost puts them. But you can pick blues and greens and, ha, ah, out of breath. I want a good yellow. Let's go with this. And then a bit of orange. These are prism colors with the gold tip on them. Obviously, didn't have room for those. Do I need another color? Let's try this dark red just for grins. Okay. Okie dokie. Graphite. Graphite. Okay. I wasn't... The brush pens aren't meant for this kind of paper. As they soak in real quickly. And uh, they're ink based. And they're real hard to blend. So let's see what we've got. Well, orange, Venetian red, which is a kind of a brownish red, and then we've got a brownish rust orange. Now, whoops, that does a lot of good when you have your brush dirty from something else. That's too pink. So that was the Venetian red. You go back to the pot. And I need a yellow ochre, maybe. I think that's all. Very similar. Need a little darker one. If y'all don't quit rolling off, I'm gonna be mad at you. Okay, so these are watercolor pencils. Honey. Okay, I think those are fine. So, like I said, I just held this up to the light and traced my lines. I didn't intend for this to be such a project. But, okay. Hush. <laughs> Here we go. We got a line missing right there. Let's 
here's my opening. I'm going to start from there. I'll get it eventually. And I just put braces there where the the connectors are. Colored pencils are kind of nice to have on a trip or something because you can do with a water brush. I'm just alternating the colors, kind of keeping my lighter ones over here. Excuse me. Drink of water. Alright, now let's come back in with our willow. I never do very good on in watercolor on when I'm doing filming. Cause I, it's not as easy to keep my <clears throat> Keep my muse entertained. And I've got a light table over there that um, would make things easier, but it's it's big. I don't know why I brought a big one, bought a big one, but I did. Now I wish I had one of the eight by teners.
K6. <laughs> Just had to make sure. Had to make sure. So that one right there is not needed. Now if you want to erase some extra lines, now would be a good time to do it. Once you've perfected this and gotten your lines where you want them. Okay, so we're coming in from here. We go down. here we got here to here to here to here to there I think <laughs> wonky maze that's what we want though So we've got a, a donkey thing here. Well, so far this is the easiest one I've done. the hardest damn thing I think I've ever tried to do. And you know me. I won't give it up. And we've got another one right here. And we've got another one what hey ya and we got one right oops one two three Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three. So three. That's two. No, that's three. No, it's not. <laughs> ah! Two is broken. Two is broken up here. And there's my there's where I was missing my fourth one. And two. Now three comes down to here. He's broken about right in here.
two, three. Okay, so I'm here. And we've got a Let's see if I got a different eraser. Okay, that goes here. I've got seven rings there. Isn't that special? Alright, let's see if we can get through. Well, let's finish this up. We're not going to quit. I told y'all, or you know me well enough to know, that I'm not um, going to screen... bad stuff from you. I have completely messed this up. It's what you get for copying. I have magic erasers and Mr. Clean erasers and all right we may have I may have to do this again or I may scrap it all together.
I'm wondering whether I should just stop. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whichever it may be where you live. I um, I do this a lot. I, I get an idea, and it may come to me while I'm sleeping, no kidding. And I just let it drift in and out of my consciousness for a few days. And then lo and behold... I don't know how it happens or when it happens or whatnot, but the idea that started germinates into something else. Um, so I thought I would share that with you because we are all creative souls. That is our makeup, that's our chemical, whatever, whatever, hunter-gatherers. And uh, we're the gatherers. <laughs> you know, that, that's old. The men aren't just the gatherers. The women are doing the gathering. <clears throat> What's the other one? Hunters. Yeah. Uh, anyway. I worked on this maze enough that I felt like I was just going to give up. But then I kept having some ideas... And somewhere here, I don't know if you can see that or not. I put a like a lotus flower in there, and so all night I've been thinking, well, you know, as it drifts in and out, I could have this be real. Wherever it's, wherever it goes, have that come out and meander back to the opening, and then up here have a bigger flower, implying that everything we do is a maze. We we don't know when we start where it ends, and we don't know what's going to happen along the way to get there. So. This idea germinates and then twists and comes to fruition. Now, that means that I need to paint another of these from yesterday. Well, from the last film. I need to do another of these, but do it in greens to imply a root. So I just simply, this is small enough and the... 140 pound paper is thick enough that if you hold it up to the light you can hold it up and get your rough outline without any histrionics or um, yelling at the kids or whatever. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm not on any timetables for any projects. If I do one in this series that um, happens to be longer. If it's appropriate, I might just cut it in half. I have no expectations, and so I don't want you to have any expectations when you are in your studio or your happy place. This is my happy place, and as long as I'm happy in this happy place, everybody wins. Make sure to put that paint side up. I'm going to do gouache again. Boom. And spray all this down really good. found a pick that I'd been looking for. Move some of this out of the way. I don't know what's going to keep that jelly plate from curling. We're just going to put that right there. Now, now, we're going to have green, so I'm going to put a little bit of yellow. 
and a little bit of blue. And I'm going to mix a green. Need more willow. Not far from these. Now I'm going to add a little white. And I'm not going to mix up my whole pile of green. Now that's a pleasant color. So there's a green. We can use some of these colors over here. Oh, that's good. Yellow ochre and white. Because plants kind of have a taupey. Let's put a little bit of red. Now, red and green are across from each other on the color wheel. Yeah, that's kind of an earthy color. So, what is my main color going to be? Or not to be? I want this little... This little brush. So I think what I'm going to do, I really want to tone that down just a little bit more. So it's not, I'm killing the chroma now. And that's too wet, so I'm going Beautiful colors together. So I'm painting my dream. I once dreamed I need some water. And again, remember to just put the very tip of the brush in your look in your water. I'm still looking back to the one I painted yesterday. Oh, anyway, once we have, um, here in Bentonville, the home of Walmart, we have the um, Alice Walton's famous Crystal Bridges Museum of American History, or American Art. And it's uh, quite respectable. But anyway, there's there are paintings in there that you would never expect to see in a one horse town in northwest Arkansas. Oh yeah, I'm liking this. Um, but there's John Singer Sargent, there's uh, Georgia O'Keeffe, uh, got 
pay attention to what you're doing here in just a minute. Chase, Homer, Winslow, Homer. And for some reason, my... I dreamed about a concept that would take pieces of art that were in the museum and combine them into a, telling a story. So um, this particular painting of sergeants is of Robert Louis Stevenson. Apparently they were friends and they were just in a casual pose one day and you know, it looked like a living room. The wife sitting on a sofa in some kind of an oriental robe or dress or something. And the composition is strange because Stevenson is walking out of the room. Real tall, lanky guy. And it's not a... It's a jarring com composition. But it works, of course. If you're John Singer Sargent, it works. And... The idea, as my muse brought it to me, there was a courtyard in another one of the rooms, and the rooms of the museum are set up by time periods, like 17, uh, 1700s, and then we went to the 18th century, 19th century, 20th century, and so on. But in one of those corridors between the rooms was a piece of artwork that was a large sphere of a red glass, I assume. It could have been plexi or something. But... Um, it acted like a prism that reflected things weirdly, you know, like a, like a pair of glasses, you know, lens and a pair of glasses. And the courtyard had a real nice um, tile floor. And I'm going to come over here before... I see something I did wrong right there. Can't talk and paint at the same time. And it was an outdoor room. It didn't have a roof on it. But anyway, the, the red sphere was sitting in front of a window on the inside I don't know what I just did there so I took Robert Louis Stevenson out of his painting and transported him in his I, I don't think it was evening wear it just looked like uh, you know a suit part of a suit he didn't have his jacket on yeah he did have a jacket on so tall and lanky and he is in this courtyard walking through it 
and my idea was that I would draw him as though he were in the sphere that distorted it, made it smaller. And but the it also showed part of him outside the sphere. So he was bigger and then when he walked into the sphere he got smaller. And the stone walls and the tile floor and that red thing made a composition. And I thought, wow, I like this. So I painted it and my vision of this painting was already plotted for me. It was done. I mean, I knew exactly how I was going to um, execute it. So I did. I did it in oil. And sometimes I practice the same thing in a different medium. So this time I decided that I would paint him as well in soft pastels. And it's kind of a challenge just to see if you can do it. I can't help it, but that's the way I roll. It's a challenge. And I love a challenge. Somebody told me once that that I was more of a a chemist type person and then once I figured out figured out how to do it or maybe a an inventor type person once I figured out how to do it I turned it over to somebody else and let them do it okay I think I'm back on track now so one thing led to another Before you knew it, I had um, gosh, four or five, and I could have kept going, but what is this? What have I done? Well, that's one of these, nothing yet, right? Right, and then this is the little doinky, it's like playing Legos. So I did all this thinking that in my grandiose dreams that Crystal Bridges would be thrilled to have something like this in their gift shop. So I actually wrote a little book, like a little coffee table book about the series. And I wrote a little poem about each one. I need to, I need to get that out and give it to you guys. I may do it over on Patreon. You would enjoy that. Note to self. Boy, this is... You gotta really kinda watch what you're doing. That's why I lightly colored in some of the parts. Okay, now let's go ahead and get this center ring in. I did one of... Um, oh, Rosie the Riveter is in this museum, the original. But anyway, um, timing wasn't right or my idea wasn't good. I know the art was good because I've already sold three or four of them. Now 
but not everybody is interested in that kind of a thing so I'll put it over there where you won't have to look at it if you don't want to this is a kind of a good exercise for negative shapes Especially, like I said yesterday, when the when the shapes are the same. So back to my dream states. We're all creative. I don't care if it's trying to decide what kind of new curtains you want in your kitchen to a painting that you want to create or hair bows you want to make for your daughter that's that's a stretch but I don't know that people even do that anymore Or maybe it's a cooking meal. You're creative. It's in your DNA and you can't argue with it. And it will come out one way or another. And you'll wake up with ideas. It's just ideas. Let your subconscious go. And you will be surprised. Let's see, so that one ended. There. And there. Okay, we're on track. Hi, Jove. I think we've got it. Okay, now this is the third row from the outside. There. Second row comes on around. Okay, we got it. We got this. Don't get too proud of yourself. So I used yellow ochre. I used cad lemon, which is the yellow that tends toward blue. So those two, and I used I think that's cobalt blue and white and those are the three colors I used Ooh. 
this is the outer ring and it goes all the way around. And do not get overly in invested in making this perfect. Alright. Now we can we can doll it up a little bit. Yeah, you could imagine that this is a leaf shape, I mean root shape. These are the little nodules. Because remember, we're going to come back and put some exploded areas where some plants, the roots are underground, but they may be making, these may sprout as plants. And Dr. V told me, actually it was Dr. V that gave me the idea, that you can't escape nature. And nature can provide you with stimulus for other forms of creativity. Without nature, we wouldn't have medications. We wouldn't understand how extinction affects us when certain groups of animals and critters and frogs and things are Their habitat gets ruined. My friend Shannon Green, she's doodling or doing something like that. She says, somebody asks, well, how do you know when, when and where to make your lines bigger or fatter? She goes, well, when I goof. <laughs> and she's doing a lot of... Um, doodles and stuff. So when she goes outside the line, she'll just make that whole section a little bit fatter. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. That's why you don't strive for perfect because we're going to come along and make it imperfect. I've also done a, one of my very first concepts. Let me turn this upside down so I can see what might need to be seen. Turn this one upside down. Now, y'all know that I come to art from a place of healing. Because when our house burned down in 2001, our daughter didn't make it out. She woke us up, saved our lives, and then she didn't make it out. Um, 
The house took 14 months to build. It was custom. We put a lot of sweat equity in it, as did my dad, who's a carpenter. And And it was really, I, I liked it a lot. It, was, it really turned out good. So that hooks up here. And learning to paint or taking up art was part of my therapy. And I had to do that. I had to make a choice of doing something like that or dying because it was that that nip and tuck. Complete breakdown. So, I'm a newbie at painting. You know, totally newbie. I had only held a paintbrush a couple times since I'd been out of school. Elementary school, I might add. So the first thing I did was went to Hobby Lobby and sat on the floor and picked a book. And then I went back to my therapist the next week and she says, no, 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 no. I would like for you to be in a group setting so that you don't get isolated in your brain. Uh, okay. Because I'm used to figuring things out for myself. Well, I found out that art wasn't that easy to figure out by myself. And I found a group... And I did that for a couple years. You know, one of the I found one group that was a a casual group at Hobby Lobby, but the teacher sometimes didn't show, and it was on Tuesday nights, and I'm not very good at nights. I'm ready to be home in my chair. And everybody in the class thought they were painting when they would take her drawing. And she did big drawings, like full sheet watercolor. So beginners don't really have any business doing that. Because, number one, a full sheet of watercolor paper is anywhere from four... Oh, and 300-pound watercolor paper. That can be 10 to $15 a sheet. And she was having us do wonky little exercises on this Primo paper. And then I got into a group of older women who were retired in a little community we've got north of here called Bella Vista. And they were in it for social painting. It was a club, the Bella Vista Art Club. Okay, I'm thinking I've got some wonkiness in. And I thought that I would fit in better because at their age, in their 70s, I was in my 50s then, that I would fit in better because I surmised in my little deviant brain that they would have lost children themselves and that I wouldn't be, a so I wouldn't be out of place. Because with the people that I ran with who were a little bit younger than me, I scared them to death because they couldn't stand to think about what happened if one of their kids died. And, you know, here I was walking among them. So, icky, therefore, icky, icky, one of mine could do that. And then what would I do? You know, that kind of thing. So, at times I felt isolated. So, I forgot where I was going with them. I just got something on there. Okay. There is that one. It looks more like plant roots. Huh, where was I going? Um, I don't remember. Oh, well. It'll come to me. I'm not going anywhere. going to put just a little bit of clean up here. Clean up. 
clear water. It's best if it's clean. <laughs> Mine's a little bit gunky. And then just blot it. Don't. It's best if you just put the water on the spot that you want to remove and let it sit there for a minute or two. And then blot it. This professional watercolor paper is strong enough to take a beating. <laughs> Um, but you still can make it peel if you do too much. It's, after all, it's paper. Damn it, I wish I could remember where I was. Oh well. Okay, that's done. And I will see you in a little bit.